three and a half years on the road and I have loved every single moment of it. I went and did a little reconfiguration and created a hinged mattress system. Yeah, leave yourself the opportunity for things to happen spontaneously. So yeah, life on the road and working on the road, um, yes, it is, it is money. Hey there, my name is Adam Hockey. Come on for a tour. So welcome to the galley, the kitchen, if you will. Um, one of the first things that I actually changed out about the uh, Winnebago Revel is I wanted a, some caps over the kitchen um, pieces because one, they're fragile. And then also I like to have a working space where I can draw, um, you know, uh, do work if I feel like I want to stand. Um, but almost as so easily, I can pull these away and then I access the actual kitchen so we have an induction oven here on the right and a nice convenient fold away sink over here. Um, but I do have also some additional um, counter space that I created. So what you'll notice here is um, a nice strong little shelf that utilizes what was kind of dead space uh, when I originally got the vehicle. Uh, so creating a little flip down shelf uh, mod uh, that you can see accommodates some pretty good weight. And then also that's where in the mornings I'm doing my coffee service. And uh, in the evenings and afternoons, it's, uh, you know, the gin tonics and wine and whatever it might be. Um, and then of course, bringing in a little decoration. Another part of arriving uh, to camp is uh, deploying some like homely sort of little touches. Uh, and then also uh, when you need that extra space, there is this little flip up table right here. So when I'm serving friends or I need that little extra preparation zone, um, really nice flip up table. This was actually a stock piece with the vehicle when I originally bought it, but I have since upgraded it um, with some nice uh, fine wood material. Uh, you'll notice throughout the van um, a lot of wood tones. Uh, so again, bringing that homeliness, that, that comfort. And since this is, uh, you know, a prefabricated van that came with, you know, kind of pretty, um, I don't want to say generic, but kind of a, a sterile setting so that it's, you know, welcoming to everyone, uh, but then changing that to have more your flavor. Uh, so those are the kind of options I love to add. So then uh, you have, of course, a very nice ample uh, storage opportunity that was already built in here. Again, I accentuated it with the nice wood tones on the um, cabinet caps from Voyager Van Works. And then of course, last but not least, where you're keeping everything cold and ready. Um, we've got the refrigerator here. Uh, I, I couldn't quote the exact capacity, but it has been very, very sufficient for my needs. Uh, mostly traveling solo, sometimes with a friend along. Uh, and then you have a little tiny freezer compartment uh, and then nice storage on the door. All right, and now we come to the cabin, or the bridge, as I like to call it. Uh, but first, before we go into that space, um, storage space up above, uh, exceptional utilization of this upper kind of what would normally be empty space. This is something that Winnebago did put in, and uh, another one of those invaluable touch points. But then, yeah, you have so much opportunity to do things with this, and it can turn into a mess if you don't bring some sort of um, compartmentalization to it. Uh, so I found these, these really cool organizational bags, uh, and then also some nice little nets for the top. So I got my beanies, I got my gloves, I have where coats and jackets and hats can go. Uh, I do keep some quick access tools up there as well. Um, but yeah, you know, you're, you're puffy down. Uh, this is where basically all the cold weather stuff goes, but I'm a sun chaser, so it doesn't deploy all that often. And then from there, we drop uh, down into the main cabin. Um, one touch point here is my speaker configuration is such that I can have my speakers static in the um, vehicle using these camera mounts because they have tripod um, mounts on the bottom of them. And when it comes time to get to camp and to deploy and be able to entertain outside, I can remove these speakers that stay in place when I'm off road, but then have them outside when it's time to, to enjoy um, the music um, in that arena. From there, I'm equipped with uh, a lot of um, setups. So I have quick access to devices like uh, the Garmin um, uh, GPS unit. Uh, I also installed um, rear uh, mirror that is camera. Um, activated so that way I have a static rear view um, where often you know you have just the rear view camera this one is on at all times which is pretty nice so another one of those uh, little opportunities that I saw when I first acquired the rig was there's this sort of empty space here between the two chairs which is you know the pass through to get to the front and to the back but you know 
it's easy enough to pass over things and I wanted to utilize this. So I created this center console piece and it's nice because I can access this while I'm driving. If there's that one thing that I wish I had or my little, you know, some nuts or an energy bar or something along those lines. Uh, and I really feel like it, it filled out and made, it took that opportunity and maximized it. I have loved this three years working with this and I've been so, so happy with it. Three and a half years on the road, and I have loved every single moment of it. The, uh, the one thing about that that's kind of interesting is that I started out with the notion that it was just going to be one year. I mean, that was really, really a solid decision. Um, but yeah, I was probably uh, three quarters of the way into that first year. I was like, wow, how do I perpetuate this and how can I keep going? Uh, because I did fall in love with it. Uh, the original motivator to do this thing probably came from my childhood. Um, my father, who died when I was quite young, uh, had a vision of doing this very same thing. He wanted to do a schoolie with my mother and you know they talked about having another child and hit the road um, and homeschool us and experience the world. I think that that was definitely hearing that story was uh, where the seed was planted so so way back in my youth you know when I could really understand and conceptualize what he had in mind I was like wow I would certainly love to do that someday I decided to start reaching towards that and grabbing that um, I was fortunate enough to to work in an industry that um, enabled this and also it was outdoor industry so I was immersed constantly in so many aspects of what it means to be doing this camping every day being off the grid so it's kind of ingrained in me um, through that work, I also did some guiding, uh, so that again was a way to, to really immerse in um, what it means to always be engaged with nature, um, which is where I'm, I'm happiest. Um, the work did also enable me an opportunity to research overlanding. Um, the industry, the company I was working for, was looking for spaces to, to enter into that arena. So I was fortunate enough to be in a role that had me going to overlanding shows, had me you know, visiting and interviewing people who were already engaged in this lifestyle. So it was a twofold um, you know, opportunity to contribute to the company, the organization, um, which I felt very um, dedicated to and strongly. Um, to bring success but then also of course on the side I'm like oh and that's what's gonna work for me and oh I might want to do that or I may want to go here uh, which did ultimately land me on um, the Winnebago Revel uh, as the palette for my vision okay so now we're in my uh, my comfort zone, so to speak. This is where I spend most of my time relaxing. You know, once I've done a nice hike or mountain bike ride, this is where I'm chilling out with my beautiful view that's right behind you. Uh, and, you know, I open up my window here to get some fresh air, nice cross ventilation, uh, and then started bringing in those, you know, again, those those homey touches of you know art and the stained glass was one of my first pursuits to how am I gonna how can I bring some some warmth and color and light refraction in um, when I did have my my home home that I sold to live this life uh, I was a mask collector so I had masks pretty much all over my home and I wanted to bring that in immediately as well so you can see the little mask collection. Um, and then really elevating the game was how can I do some really, really big art? Uh, and so coordinating with a very, very good friend of mine, Justine, who is just a talent beyond measure. She helped me create this cap for the cabinet that you see here. Up in this cabinet's where I keep, you know, some books and um, some games and, you know, quick access kind of fun things and what I do when I relax here. Um, also some more artwork here on the side. And then also, uh, you know, wasn't completely satisfied with uh, how Winnebago had done the build out as far as um, the material and the upholstering. So I went ahead and reupholstered all of the pieces here. Uh, another close friend, another Adam, he did this amazing work um, throughout the vehicle. So it's reflected on anything that has upholstering. Um, and then also adding in some extra comfort touch points like the original van did not come with a back cushion and you could see that that's exactly where I was relaxing and lounging so built out this little piece to wedge into this zone um, and eventually someday I'm even going to accentuate it with a little storage compartment back there um, but that's the next step and it is always a process of 
you spend time in your van, you start to get all your little things dialed, but there's always another opportunity. And so I'm always looking out for like, where, where can I um, expand um, what's going to make this an even more comfortable experience. So uh, another very uh, well thought out um, portion of this space is this, this wonderful little stowaway table um, that Winnebago put in that. So it was again, one of those items that was already here and, and very well executed on. Uh, so this is where, you know, I spend uh, time when I'm working on the road. Um, I actually have two points in the van. I have my front office and back office. We'll talk about that one later. Uh, but yeah, generally I'm here with the laptop. I'm plugging away if I need to be. Um, otherwise I'm enjoying a nice book. Uh, and then also, you know, I have it rigged up so that the second monitor is here with the iPad and I can link that to my um, uh, laptop. So really nice workspace. Uh, and then, you know, the, the cap is that the cherry on top is that my view is ever changing and always beautiful. So yeah, life on the road and working on the road. Um, yes, it is, it is money. So now we come to my water closet, if you will. Um, however, I definitely had some notions when I first purchased the rig that I already knew this isn't where I was going to be showering because I shower predominantly on the outdoor shower, which is off the back, which again, we'll see that later. Uh, so what I did is convert this space to predominantly storage. It was already configured that way from Winnebago, but I wanted to expand that opportunity again. Uh, so knowing that I would have static storage, but still wanting access to the toilet. So I created these breakaway shelves so that I can like pull back to access the toilet, little top shelf for the headspace, which uh, friends have already coined the guillotine and that is now what it has been called ever forward. Uh, but it is a really, really nice, um, uh, very usable uh, functionality add to the space. Of course, on the door, some ads, uh, mirror, um, you know, very helpful. And then, you know, you bring in some artwork and eventually someday I will put a really nice pattern and beautiful uh, um, finish on these doors as well. But that's again, one of those things in the future. All right, so here's the, the control panel for the rig. Uh, this is where everything from internal heater, uh, there's an S-bar heater that is controlled from this panel here, actually these two, um, some more lighting controls. Uh, then good readout for, I, had, I added on from Agile Off-Road, um, their lithium uh, battery system, which has been indispensable. Uh, providing you know everything that I need when I'm back country and off the grid even if there's like cloudy conditions uh, so I can access all of those specifics here uh, but then also you know it is kind of a control panel it's not necessarily the mo most elegant and, and beautiful thing so you pepper it with some artwork you bring in some decor and some color and some uh, customization uh, so yeah doing the best you can to, to make it feel homey um, but then also have that functionality at quick access. Um, yeah, I've, uh, I've, I've conceptualized covering it up, but you always want to get to it. You always want to see what's going on. So this is what's worked best for me. Feeding those three lithium batteries that are actually stowed externally on the base of the vehicle. Um, I do have 300 watts coming in from the roof. I did reconfigure from the original um, setup uh, to three 100 watt panels. Um, I needed to do that also because I brought in a roof box on top. And so that was casting shade across those panels. And of course you want to avoid that as much as possible. And then that also opened the opportunity to bring in uh, additional solar. Uh, so yeah, getting all, all the juice we need. So yeah, of course, definitely the reality of entering into this arena, depending on how deep and how far you want to go with it is, is not an inexpensive um, proposition. I mean, it can be, and I have friends who have really, really done this in a grassroots way that has maximized uh, affordability. And I so honor and respect that and I'm always um, just impressed with that. I, I decided I wanted to go kind of all in because again, it was like, I know I want to be out there for the duration. So I'm going to invest in comfort to the maximum. I mean, there, there are even setups way beyond mine. Um, the configuration that I have that you see behind you, uh, behind me uh, is with all of the upgrades, with all the customization and all the work that I put into it, it's definitely um, 200,000 plus. Um, and you know, because of that price tag, I had to dramatically um, pursue it in such a way that I sold my home, I sold my, my Honda Element that I adored, I sold my motorcycle. Actually, that was the hardest part, watching my motorcycle drive away. <laughs> I was like, oh, 
<laughs> but I knew I wanted to make this thing happen. And you know, I even conceptualized, of course, having the bike along, but I decided that my activities were gonna be all muscle power based, because um, I knew I wanted to be engaged since I'd be doing so much driving. Um, well, I guess one little thing I would add on that note, I do have a standing rule that when I'm traveling, I only ever allow myself, unless I really have to be somewhere, which I try to avoid, um, three and a half hours maximum driving so that I'm spending more time in the space doing, uh, whether that's on my bike or on foot, you know, hiking, backpacking, photography. And then I let that kind of also um, create the journey and ride the wave, so to speak, that three and a half hours, what's three and a half hours from here? Oh, well now I can use my resources to find that BLM land, that national forest, or that harvest host that then I can, you know, set up in and then adventure and journey, experience all these things I didn't even expect. Um, so definitely, yeah, leave yourself the opportunity for things to happen spontaneously. Um, in fact, I encourage that more than anything else. So welcome to Eve's backside. Um, I don't think I mentioned earlier that Eve is my rig's name. So yeah, we're on the road as Adam and Eve and always having a great time. Um, as you might imagine, we've become very close. And uh, what you have here is where I keep all of kind of those things you'd, you'd preferably have out of your living space. So we added in the um, Illumines uh, rear box systems, uh, which also then provides a lot of opportunity for other add-ons as well. So you can see here I have my shovel, my ax, um, for those any situation that might come about. Uh, and then I have this um, passenger side box is where I keep kind of fun things like, you know, my chairs and blankets and frisbees and, you know, stuff that I want to get to quickly to relax, but then also plenty of room to store it, you know, just as quickly to get back on the go. Uh, and then of course, what is first and foremost, most important to me when I set out on this journey is how are my bikes going to come along? Uh, so you can see here I'm set up uh, with two racks, uh, really good um, one-up racks that fare amazingly well when you're off-road. These really um, hug the bicycles and they are very important to me. Uh, I, I always carry a cross-country mountain bike and normally right here is my um, uh, gravel bike. Uh, so that way I have every terrain is available to me. I did also, maybe I mentioned earlier, add a rooftop box. So on top of the rig is where I keep things that I definitely know I'm gonna use far less often. Um, there's a bike stand in there, there's tarps. Um, you know, my backpacking gear is up there because you know certainly I'm only gonna use that from time to time. Um, but again, Fairly easy to get to, but only on rare occasions. All right, welcome to my back office. Uh, one of my, the things I knew that I would want is that if wherever I'm at, the, the, the best space, the best view, and also the light and where the sun's located, and if I still need to be getting after work, I was like, how do I configure a way that I have that opportunity in multiple spaces within the van? Uh, so yeah, I configured um, this cabinetry uh, setup so that I could have a nice cozy place to sit back and do work, enjoy the view. Um, I am able to even set up here with both computers too, so I have that dual monitor opp opportunity. And this was all um, designed by myself and then constructed by a, a very close friend back in Seattle, uh, Jay Aruda Furniture. And uh, you know he just did such an amazing job working with me on this. Uh, so you can see a lot of uh, organization. I, again, that wanting to keep it as much like home as possible. You know, I go in my bedroom, I want everything in my cabinets and my drawers. You'll also um, see that I have um, high shelf cabinetry that I built into the sides for additional organization. Um, so I have all kinds of little cubbies to place things, but again, everything is nice and secure. So when I'm off road, um, it's a non-issue. One thing that did occur when I added this in is uh, I configured it such that the bed, which comes down from the ceiling here when you want to deploy to go to sleep, doesn't come down as far as, as was initially um, designed by Winnebago. Uh, so I cut off my, you know, about a half a foot, but I'm, I'm a smaller guy, so I don't need a lot of space up there. So it worked for my purposes. And welcome to the bedroom. This is, uh, yeah, we're, you spend very cozy evenings. It has been ever since I set off on the journey that, I mean, it's been three plus years and 
every single night when I crawl up in here, I just get the biggest smile on my face and I feel so happy crawling into my little cocoon. Uh, but yeah, then when it's bedtime, this comes down from the ceiling um, where it was nice and put away and you can see that I have it set up uh, for basically quick deploy. I can get in bed really fast. It's just a matter of positioning my pillows. Um, but one thing that I did change about this configuration from the uh, original setup is it was a kind of a three mattress um, uh, paradigm where there was mattresses in the bump outs on either side of the, uh, the rig on the drive and passenger side. And then you had the center mattress, but then that effectively made it so that you couldn't just always have the bed made unless you kept it down all of the time. So I went and did a little reconfiguration and created a hinged mattress system. Uh, and then that way, with sheets that I also configured to wrap around and have that hinge, my bed is essentially always made. And as soon as this rolls down, um, both sides collapse onto the platforms and boom, the bed is ready to go. The bed is made. All I have to do is pull my comforter back and set up my pillows and yeah, like in no time. So that's, that's uh, been a very satisfying um, tweak, but it was, it was pretty complicated, but you know, as so many of those things are, but then once you execute on them and you, you find success, uh, that's maybe part of why I get that smile every night when I crawl into bed. Yeah, so with that, thank you so much for uh, taking some time to, to watch and learn a little bit about uh, my world uh, in the tiny home uh, sphere of things. Um, it's been an honor to have this opportunity to share. Uh, really fun for me to reflect upon it as well. Uh, if you are interested in seeing and learning more, I do. Uh, I'm fairly good about posting on my Instagram. That's uh, Van Centric, and that would be Next Level Revel. Um, I do also have one that's a little bit more of my own fine photography. Fine photography. <laughs> I'm a hack, but that's at Ad Hoc 62. Uh, and then as I mentioned earlier, the small business that I'm uh, endeavoring to build, that will be Next Level Overland. And my specialty will be accessories for the interior of the van that are both that combination of creating um, usability, functionality, and beauty. Uh, some of the things that you saw are what I would describe as the early prototypes that I've been living with for the better part of three years. So they're very refined and authentic and I hope that other people will enjoy them as well and that again it'll accentuate their experience and uh, again thanks so much um, definitely very hopeful that I will see you out there don't hesitate to reach out because I love meeting new people and I love more than anything sharing my experiences of where you might want to go to experience nature like directly I have all kinds of great pins I can share with you on amazing places to visit and then after that I definitely want to hear about your experience <laughs> take it easy Thank you.